So are you looking for a way to live stream with your Canon M50, but you don't want to have to go through all of the hacks that you have to deal with for HDMI, you like turning off the autofocus and getting the boxes and all the details from around your face. You just don't want to have to deal with that or you can't really find a capture card right now. Well, either way, we're going to be jumping into how to live stream with this kind of a camera, the Canon M50. And we're going to be doing it with just a regular cable that you can find around your house or ask somebody that you know for one. And we're going to be talking about it coming up next. Hey, what's up guys? It's Diana here with Untrade Woman TV, helping you move your vision forward using video. So whether it's a tech tip like we'll be diving into today or a video marketing tip, that's the kind of content that we do here on the channel. So if that's something that you're into, definitely consider subscribing, but let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. So I've been live streaming with the Canon M50 for the past couple years and it's been a phenomenal experience. However, there are a ton of hacks that you have to do when it comes to HDMI, which you probably have experienced or you've seen or heard about somewhere, even in my series that I did on this camera. However, in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through what we're gonna do to get around the HDMI issues. So if you can't find a capture card right now, this would be super helpful for you. So instead of HDMI, what we're doing is we're replacing that HDMI connection with a USB type of connection. The only thing that you want to do is make sure that your settings are where you want them to be as far as the brightness or the darkness and the normal stuff that what you would do for a regular video. That's the only thing you have to do in camera. So let's talk about the USB cable. So the USB cable we're most familiar with is just kind of like the square version of what you would see on any standard device. However, what we're going to be needing to plug into the camera side of things is going to be called USB type B micro, meaning it's the kind that you would find for like your fire sticks or something like that, or even any older Android phone that you would have found over the past couple years, probably. This is that kind of a cable. It's kind of curved on top and flat on the bottom. And like I said, you can usually find these for just about any device. The difference is we need one that has the ability to transfer data because we need that information coming from the camera that we're going to send to our computer so that it reads it for the live streams. Now, if you aren't sure what cable does what, there's no kind of markings or anything that I'm familiar with that will you know, show you one thing or the other. The only way that I found is to actually legit connect this to your computer. No software or anything like that running, other than maybe if you have the Canon EOS utility app, then if you plug the cable that you're trying to see if it's gonna work or not in your camera, then it's the type three for the M50 version and it'll read it and it'll say like Canon M50. If you see that, then that cable works. If you don't see anything, it's like no camera has been connected at all, then you know at that point, probably try another cable. But try that, make sure you find a cable that works. When you do that, then we'll jump into the software like we're gonna do right now. So we're talking about two programs that you can use in this video. So I wish it was just one to cure all, but it's not. So if you're on a Mac, then I would highly recommend Ecamm Live. With Ecamm Live, they haven't natively built into the software for any Canon camera that once you, or I say any with the asterisk next to it, cause some older cameras like the Canon EOS M doesn't work with it. So, you know, if it's super old like that, it may not work, but M50, SL2, SL3, uh, something like that, T6 even, or T, you know, any of those cameras, it'll probably work. They have a natively built in so that all you have to do is connect it via USB into your camera no other programs or software needed, and it'll recognize it. As well as Sparkle Cam, they have it for Nikon as well as for Canon cameras. Same process, plug it in via USB from the camera to the PC and you're good to go. So we're gonna go through those two quick tutorials. So let's jump into Ecamm Live first. So the first thing that you wanna do is go ahead and start Ecamm Live first. Then go ahead and connect your Canon camera via USB and you want to allow Ecamm Live to access your camera. Once you see that it registers it and it pulls it up on the screen, you can go ahead and select your camera. Now, there are two ways that you can kind of see or select whatever camera that you want because you can connect multiple Canon cameras like an Ecamm Live via USB and select the specific camera that you want there. So honestly, that's all it takes when it comes to connecting it for Ecamm Live and Sparkle Cam is pretty similar and simple as well. So let's hop over there. If you're just installing Sparkle Cam for the first time, you wanna go ahead and install the program. I highly recommend using the install wizard. It'll walk you through and give you all the permissions that you need to get going. 
From there, go ahead and start the program. Then go ahead and connect your Canon M50 to your PC using the USB cable and you will see that it recognizes it. So I did notice when I was using Sparko Cam, just looking at the regular feed, I don't know if this is because it wasn't paid for and they're just kind of giving me a lower quality or what the issue is, but it didn't really look all of that great to me, kind of looked a little bit foggy. However, that's just my experience for the time that I'm trying it for the sake of this tutorial. However, I do have a buddy who used it for quite some time, probably about a year or so, and his live streams looked fine. So I can't really say if there's an issue when it comes to the quality for Sparkle Cam, but again, I did notice something, but I've seen other streams use it and it looked fine. When it comes to Ecamm Live, that's something I'm definitely experienced with using, but as far as the quality drop between HDMI connection or USB connection, I'm not seeing any. And I've done regular videos, any videos that you saw when I was still using my Canon M50, probably about 99% of the time, I was using, if I was at my desk, I was using Ecamm Live and the USB method. And I didn't notice any quality drops from any of the lenses that I tried or anything like that. I think the biggest thing when it comes to live streaming though, and the quality of your live streams is going to be adding in lighting, but more importantly, power options. So if you don't have any power options to keep your camera going for long periods of time to make sure that it doesn't die, then you're only going to be streaming for a little bit of time. Now I did recently do a video about the power adapter options for the Canon M50. So if you want to check that video out, I highly encourage you to check right there as well as another video on live streaming. I'm doing more tips and stuff like that to even see should you do a pro account or maybe a standard account when it comes to Ecamm Live, you can check that video right there. But otherwise, guys, with a passion, I'll see y'all in the next video.